The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. It's been a wild week, and we got a wild Friday to kick things off. You're looking at an S&P 1.42% lower on the futures right now, negative by 55 points. And, folks, we are 312, 312 points below where we were trading at just 72 hours ago. Remarkable. Uh, not sure where the day goes, man, but it's going to be a dicey one as the markets cannot find a bid since those CPI numbers out on Tuesday, and I can't blame it, folks, uh, could be a game changer in a big way. You get the NASDAQ 100 off a pretty similar 1.45% right now off 172 points. How about the NASDAQ 100 losing 1,100 points? I mean, you're approaching 10% on the NASDAQ 100. You're approaching, what did I just say, 300 plus points, so what, seven and a half, eight percent in the S&Ps? You're talking about a Dow that's given up 2,100 points. Now, that's about, what, six, seven percent, something on the Dow. And you're looking at a Russell right now giving up 135 points. So 190 would be 10 percent. What are you talking about? Six percent, something like that on the Russell. Huge moves in 72 hours, man. Uh, but boy, this market continuing to struggle to find a bid. We got crude. Trading towards the lows we had overnight, right where we closed out yesterday's action, 84.60 for the price of crude. Gold continuing to struggle, man. 16.66.60. Whoa. Watch out. That's a lot of sixes in that price, folks. 16.66.60 as I come on the air. Gold down about $10. Uh, and interesting, as we jump around the currencies, you haven't seen the type of dollar strength that you might think when you have gold trading down, what, $80 from where we were. We've had huge moves, but CPI comes out on Tuesday. Gold was trading at $17.40. We give up, we give up about $80 in gold at $16.66. And we're in a dicey area for gold, man. You put this thing on a five-year weekly, folks. We have now broken below. I've been talking about it for a long time, man, because we've been above this price area for the long time. But you're pushing prices, excuse me, that gold has not seen basically since the pandemic, folks. Um, Excuse me, you break out of that price range about June of 2020. We were trading down there at 1671. Let's see. No, we actually didn't even get down to 1666. I got a low of 1671 back in June. You got to go back to 1676. We get in April, but we were lower than that today. 1666.20 is the low April 20th. And you got to go back to the first week in April. Yeah, to get to the prices that we were at in June, you just broke below the low we had from July. You just broke below the low we had from August. You just broke below, now that's August of last year, okay? You just broke below the lows we had from March of 2029 as well. Now, those lows are pretty close to where we are right now, folks. You're talking about 1677. You're talking about 1673. You're talking about 1677 again, and you're talking about 1678. All of those lows within about $5 from 1673 to 1678 we're just below that level, uh, critical area. Doesn't mean this thing is going to cascade lower. You're into the COVID volatility for gold. Interesting to see how it handles that volatility. And if you break through it, or maybe that's an area of support as we come into an area. And folks, it's been an area of support basically for the better part of two years, which is remarkable. Uh, but boy, things change quickly sometimes. You jump to notes and bonds. And what do we got? You got flat action, but guess what? We got flat action basically at the lows right now, and you're talking about a 10-year that is flat at 114.16. You're just seven ticks off of where we were, and look at the run this thing has had, man. Now, this is a weekly, okay? You kick off August at 122, and we are in the middle of September, six weeks later. Let's put it on a daily to kind of show you how quick this slide has been to 114.16. I think you got yields probably somewhere near about 3.44%, 3.45% on the 10-year as we come into Friday. Oh my goodness, I don't have my charts up. Are you kidding me? I apologize. How did that happen? Was I not seeing that? I wasn't getting any notifications. My bad. Let's jump around to that again. Okay. 
That would help, wouldn't it? On a day where we got the S&Ps down 1.4%. I guess you were just staring at my pretty face to kick off Friday. Well, we'll change that, folks. Don't worry. Uh, let's do it real quick again. The S&Ps, you're breaking below levels. I just talked about gold for a lot, so let's just talk about, about gold for a moment. We'll back things up on a weekly. There's your five-layer weekly action, okay? And here are the lows I was talking about, folks. You back it up to July. You're trading at 1678 your low. You go to 2021, 1677, the lows from early 2021, and you can see you got to get back to the COVID volatility for gold as you're at 1667 this morning. Okay, we jump to notes and bonds, as I mentioned as well. That's a weekly. We'll put it on a daily, and there's your slide, man. We're coming right into this area. We've got critical areas all over the place right now, folks, in terms of yields. You can't argue that's a critical area when we're coming straight into the lows that we had of June, and it's like a one-way trip, man, as in pretty decisive action. There has been no reprieve, and when you think about it, folks, no reprieve for what? Six weeks of trading? There is no reprieve whatsoever. I mean, yeah, you have green bars in there, okay? But all the green bars do is get you half of back of what the previous day lo lost, or maybe you get two green bars in a row that erase one day's losses, and then the slide begins yet again. No reprieve for six weeks as we have had lower price and higher yield, and I'm not sure that changes anytime soon. We jump over to the VIX this morning as markets kick things off down about 1.4%. VIX still not even back to where we were on that spike on Tuesday up to 28. Folks, if you think this market is freaked out, if you think this is a max fear situation, just zoom in on the VIX and you will see that there is nowhere near a max pain situation just yet. And even zooming in on just where we were just this year, okay? There's this year alone. Most of the time when we're getting dicey in this market, man, we're hitting 35 to 37 and that's just going back folks this year. Okay, that's not doing some historical comparison uh, where things might be a little bit different. That's talking about the VIX. That's talking about the VIX when we got a spike at the June lows. That's talking about VIX when we got the spike in May. That's talking about VIX when we were there in February and in March as the war began in the Ukraine, in Ukraine. Uh, and then you had the initial spike in March when the market really started cascading lower. So there is a lot more room for more fear in this market if it happens, folks. Uh, you get the S&P sitting at 3868. 3900 was an important area and we just blew right through it overnight. And as I mentioned, as you kick things off, you got the S&Ps off and I'll put this back, okay? We'll put it on the 15 minutes since I didn't have my charts up to kick off the program, man. But yeah, you're talking about 300 points from where you were just on Tuesday's action, folks. NASDAQ 100. 1,100 plus points from where you were trading. We were pushing 13,000 when we came into the CPI on Tuesday. Now, folks, you could make a very real case, folks, that you had no business trading higher by 1,000 points in the NASDAQ 100 coming into that CPI number. No business whatsoever. Hindsight, obviously, 2020 on this one. Uh, you give all that back in a day, and then you give up back some. But boy, you know, we're nowhere near the lows, folks. We still got a thousand points in the NASDAQ in terms of the, the lows when we were at in June. And you talk about the S&Ps, you still got 230 points from where we are from the lows. Don't think they're out of question when things change so quickly from where we're at right now in this market. And we'll jump over to the dollar index as we wrap up this first segment, DXY, pushing above 110. Now, I mentioned gold, right? Getting decimated this morning. You do have a rising dollar, but as I've said, you know, not to the dramatic fashion that you may expect for the type of pain that the dollar's in, and we'll finish it up with the yen right now. Not huge action, but dollar getting uh, a little bit of strength this morning. Gold getting hurt. Markets, S&P down 50. We got a big show, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at 
tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell, and you got markets dramatically lower. You got an SP off 1.27%, NASDAQ 100 1.34%, and the Dow off 1.2%, Russell off 1.45%. Pretty broad, pretty much in line across the board. Crude, even in the last few minutes, catching a little bit of a bid. We'll put it on a five minute chart. Crude spike, I mean, the move's in crude, folks. Since I came on the air at 9.05, crude's up a dollar. But it's a nothing rally because all it does is get it back to where it was trading at in the eight o'clock hour. Just remarkable volatility continuing crude, and that's going to continue for some time. And there's your gold contract at 1667 so far this morning. Now, let's jump around to some of the stories. Uh, always interesting to hear the takes, and you get to analyze, folks, the takes. All right, I share these takes with you, not because they're accurate or the correct, but it allows you. I mean, Kevin Hinks so many times has some great expressions, right? He says, um, it's, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I had a quote in my head, but I don't want to muck his quote up. Uh, but it's up to you to make your decisions for a market bias, folks. And the great thing about their program at Fast Market is you make those decisions about what you think is going to happen in the market. And then they teach you using options, okay, and you can do it using equities, the best way to capitalize off of those market biases. So you take them for what they're worth. But Bank of America out there, they're not seeing new highs anytime soon, folks. New lows for U.S. stocks as inflation shock ain't over. Shouldn't be surprising, man. You know, the amount of money that analysts are getting to tell you that uh, inflation shock is not over, folks, when we got the CPI print that we just got, seems like something that uh, some common sense might be able to push through in a big way. High inflation, inflation earnings recession to fuel declines, uh, and that is according to Bank of America strategists. Inflation shock ain't over. And an earnings recession will likely drive stocks to new lows. That's Michael Hartnett said in a note. Although the bank said U.S. equity funds posted their biggest inflows in more than a month, the week ended September 14th. Did you see what the market just did? Biggest inflows in a month, the week into September 14th. And we just traded down 7 to 8% off the CPI number we got on Tuesday. Let alone if you're in the NASDAQ 100, we're off even more than that right now. Um His analysis of past bear markets shows average peak to trough. I mean, folks, we went through this many times before, but you forget pretty quickly. 
when in the current state of the short-term period of time that we're in, do you think there's a max pain situation? I mean, the VIX at 27 right now and the S&Ps sitting near 3,900, not that bad considering where we've been in the past and what we need to tackle in the current uh, perspective. That suggests the current bear market, which the benchmark index confirmed in June, will end in October with the gauge at 3,000. Better watch out, man. A lot of people are going to be pretty freaked out. This market trades down another 1,000 points in the S&Ps. But, folks, we just traded down 300 points in 72 hours. You better believe that there's risks on both sides of this market. If we're reaching a, a period, and I know many of you don't think this way, so in a good way I say that, right? As in, don't think because we went down 300 points that there's now a greater chance that you catch a little bit of a bounce, right? There is still equal chance, usually, you get you know, asymmet asymmetric um, premiums when you're thinking about the moves to higher price to lower price. But there's a very real chance this market could go down 500 points, just like there's a very real chance it could go up 500 points. Doesn't matter what happened yesterday that we went down 300 points in the last 72 hours. It matters right now. Like, get 4,800 out of your head. That's what I'm trying to, I think, portray and, and explain the best. As in 4,175, the market had no business being at 4175. We know that now because the market is not wrong and the market's trading at 3870. But it's very easy to start saying, well, we've already given up a thousand S&P points. That's a lot of give back. You know, you have to factor in that at some point we're going to find a bid because there's a lot of bad news already factored in when the S&Ps have traded down a thousand points. While true, okay, while true, another way of saying that, okay, is that we came into the CPI print at 41.75, which is within 85 points of where this market was trading at in September, coming into the final quarter of the year. All you did was give back the final three months of last year. Now, folks, we're a year out, okay? So you have consolidated with no gain for a year. But even pre-pandemic, you came in at 3,200, and we're talking about a price level of 3,900, right? Well, no, we're talking about a price level of about 4,100, where you came into that CPI print, 41 to 4,200. So you're talking about that the market 72 hours ago was within a stone's throw of where it was trading at a year ago. And all you did was basically trade flat for a year from September to September. And that is following, that is following a 33% rise from pre-pandemic levels, I'm not cherry picking 2174, okay? I'm not taking the level right before it where you had inclined. I'm going from January of 2020, you're at about 3,200. You trade up to September to a price of about 4,200. The market gains 33% in a year and a half as we endure a pandemic, the likes that most of our generations have never seen, and then you chop around for a year. With everything going on, it seems like the market might have the right to trade a little bit lower from where it was trading at in September. And I'm, I'm, I'm being uh, uh, a, a bit exaggerated, of course, folks, as in you better believe that some of the 33% that this market gained from beginning of January 2020 to where you were in September, what if we just get a pullback uh, of half of that? Right? What does that bring us down to? That brings us down to about 3,700 if you give back 50% of the gain that you got from there. Folks, we are still trading, okay? 650 points above where we opened in January of 2020. We are still up. I mean, remarkable. 650 points where we started 2020. It's only two and a half years. 600 points is almost a 20% gain. The market is up 20% in a period of two and a half years since the world shut down during a pandemic, and now we have inflation, the likes that uh, at least my generation has never seen. That's the kind of mentality you want to walk yourself through, in my opinion. Okay, It allows you to keep the context of what is going on a little bit easier than saying to yourself, we just traded it down 1,000 points. Man, this market's given back a lot. It has not given that much back when you look at things in a little bit of a broader context. Now, you really want some dicey territory, okay? Is you pull up a chart from 2008, where it's basically a straight shot from 666 to 4808. That seems like I'm cherry picking two things too, too well, as in cherry picking a very low that was obviously exacerbated on 665 on the S&Ps back in 2008. 
But I've done this example before because this is the one that makes the most sense in my head to, to realize the market sentiment at the time. We came into the presidential elections in 2016, man. The market was trading at 2,200. We're up 1,600 points from then. What is that exactly? I'm going to pull it up. 1,600, and I'm just rounding everything right now because they're big numbers. But that is a percentage gain of 72%. And that's a percentage gain in about six years. You divide that by six. I know we got compounding and what. But that's about a 12% gain. From where we sit right now, folks, from where 2016 started uh, the election. And I bring that up because it's important to remember that everybody thought everything was great financially, right? Trump caught a lot of flack that he just caught, as in wasn't getting credit for what he's doing, no matter what you think about it, okay? He wasn't getting credit from the people thought he didn't deserve credit because everybody said the economy was on such a great track already. Well, that was at 2,200. We've done 12.5% a year for six straight years at 3,800. We are very elevated at these levels with inflation raging. We'll come back for the open, folks. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, you got markets open, folks. You got the S&P right now. You're negative by just 42 points as you were a little bit lower coming into the opening bell. My dad, he is flying this morning. He is 30,000 feet in the air, but he's in the Tiger's Den, folks, and he's chatting. Uh, great point in there talking about, so we got quad witching going on, 
right now. And when you get the S&P futures down like this on quad witching, most times once they expire on the open, expire on the open, okay, that's the S&P, uh, you can get a big bounce in the market. So we'll see how that plays out. We've been open for less than a minute, and you see the volatility jumping around right now. Quad witching, folks. Uh, interesting action, to say the least, on a week where we have had the market trade dramatically lower, to put it lightly. And just look at the acceleration we had from 745, man. You're up at 3890. You trade down almost 30 points. You jump up to 3880, and you get the markets pretty much red across the board right now. We jump to crude, sitting at about $85, 8535. Gold down about $9. Be interesting to see where the day goes for the commodities. And we jump around to some of the currencies right now. DXY, dollar index. Above 110, 110.03, we got the euro US dollar right now. Just basically a parity, 99.68. We jump over to the pound US dollar, 113.38. Now, check this out, folks. I've been talking about it. Are you trading currencies at all? I encourage you to check out the Tiger Forex report under newsletters written by our man Teddy Kegstad. He does an outstanding job, and currencies are so important with everything going on in this market right now. Uh, but you take a look at the pound US dollar, right? Pound US dollar, man, we are bouncing off this lower trend down line. Now, here's the important part of this, okay, is that it's still a pretty radical downtrend channel that the pound and the euro are in, okay, even though there might be some divergence of where in those channels they each are if you're trading the pound or the dollar. The pound pushing lows of that channel line at 113.85 versus, right, you pull up the euro US dollar on a similar, similar time frame. Not hard to see that you're actually near the top portion of that channel line. What does that mean? Boy, that means that the euro can just trade to the bottom portion of this channel line, and you're talking about 96, 95, 94, depends potentially how long it takes on the euro US dollar. We jump over to the dollar yen. Whoops, USD, JPY. And the yen sitting at about 143, just consolidating a little bit. This is a daily. So we've been chopping around since about November 7th. You're talking about nine days. That spike there is, for all intents and purposes, an erroneous spike. So ignore that tail down on the yen. You've just been chopping around between 142 and about 145 on the dollar yen. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on. And uh, how about Apple? We'll bring up Apple. Interesting article over at Bloomberg. So Apple... You talk about a give back, man. If you're looking for some action in Apple, maybe you're talking about the 618, which is about $3, $3.50 below where we're trading at right now. Pretty remarkable, folks. When this market got up to 4,300, there was a lot that you could be looking at. And hindsight is always 2020, okay? And we did make some trades. We had a couple bearish trades uh, in my newsletter. You can always let them run lower when you got a market going like this, but that is hindsight, okay? But one of them was Apple has 16 billion shares outstanding, folks, okay? And you had a company trade from 129 to 176. So that is $47 that you traded higher for a company that has 16 billion shares outstanding, okay? That is $750 billion in market cap that Apple created for itself over a period of June 16th to, to August 16th, two months. Apple climbed $750 billion in market cap. Well, guess what? That's not sustainable forever, folks, okay? Uh, especially in light of where we are fundamentally in this economy with inflation and the goal ahead of the Fed going on. Pretty remarkable. Now, with that said, we've just dropped $26, and 26 you're talking about 400 plus billion dollars that has been taken away from the wealth of Apple shareholders alone. Biggest company out there, of course, you're gonna have some big numbers. Amazon shares, let's jump around, see how some of the FANG stocks are opening as this market struggles to find a bid in the first couple of minutes of trading at least. We got Amazon, giving it back, man. If you're looking for the 618 on Amazon, you're talking about 120.50, you're back to about 120.182. My dad, we had a great conversation yesterday in his show talking about the moves you're getting in these markets on both directions, you can be a two-way trader. But you want to make sure that if you are a two-way trader, and let's say you are bearish this market, as many are, okay, that a preponderance of your trades, to say the least, he said 90% um, is what you're trading, a preponderance to a uh, severe degree of your trades are on the bearish side, but doesn't mean you can't find contrarian bounces when you got the moves that we have happening in this market almost on a daily basis going on right now. As in, okay, 
maybe one of those bounces is Amazon at the 618, even if you're bearish in this market. Okay, now you can be trading the futures as well. I think he was really referring to the futures, uh, talking about the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, the NQs, the Qs. But it rings a bell on this because do I want to load up the boat on any equity right now? No. But if you're looking for a trade, Amazon down 4% today, coming into the 618, given up. $25 from where it was trading at on August 16th. Now let's take a look at Amazon. How many shares does Amazon have trading as they've been splitting? All right, Amazon's got 10, 10 billion. They'll make 10.187, okay? So it's a little bit bigger than that, but Amazon's got 10 billion shares, man. And uh, what did they just give up? They just gave up about $25. That's $250 billion. That's a quarter trillion dollars. They just gave up from where it was trading at August 16th. So, you know, I'm not, I wasn't exactly looking for a bounce this week. But folks, when you get the markets dropping 10% in a week, okay, they're getting ahead of the Fed to a certain degree. They are getting ahead of the Fed to a certain degree. Doesn't mean they can get ahead of everything, okay? But the mar markets figured out they were magnificently wrong coming into Tuesday's number. Inflation, nowhere near, nowhere near back in the bottle. And we'll see how that one plays out. Now, Amazon, last night, first time NFL streamed exclusively on a streaming service. Amazon had Thursday Night Football. I caught a little bit of it. I was watching it on my phone at one point. I was watching it on the television using my Roku. They had a pregame going on. It was pretty interesting. They got a great game. Didn't stay up for the end of it. Uh, but you had Kansas City, the Chiefs, Mahomes, ended up winning versus the uh, Chargers. A great game overall. Uh, and be interesting to see where that goes. But Thursday Night Football exclusively now on Amazon Prime. And, folks, you've got a lot of football nuts in this world, man, uh, in this country at least. And be interesting to see. One of the greatest dynamics, I think, of how it plays out is they spent billions to do this, okay, but they're going to sell ads for it. So this isn't like a Netflix signing up and they just have to make up the money via now, Netflix is going to start selling ads, okay, but just rewinding to where they didn't, okay? Amazon's going to sell ads, man. They're selling them at something like $500,000 a pop for 30 seconds, and they're going to sell those ads, and they're going to be targeted. Imagine the ability to target on Amazon on something like television, folks. The world is going to change, man. All of that data, imagine how much more people will be willing to pay if you know you are targeting a customer We're watching Thursday night football and you want to only hit, I mean, I don't even have to tell you, right? You only want to hit somebody that's maybe you're Procter and Gamble, right? I mean, Procter and Gamble, you can see, have they bought any of your laundry detergent recently, right? Oh, tell me customers that haven't bought laundry detergent in two to three weeks, but they've bought it in the last three months. I mean, you're just hitting people that right, might be right on the verge of buying. You could pay a lot more money if that's the type of targeting that Amazon's going to provide in streaming NFL live football during the broadcast, let alone everything else going on. That was last night, but Amazon dramatically lower with everything else this morning. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 53 points, trading at 38.65. NASDAQ 100, man, you're pushing almost session lows down 1.6%. I told you, you got Amazon down almost 4% right now. You got Apple off 2%. Look at that drop off we saw just on the opening bell right now for Apple. We're going to get back to Apple in a moment. Microsoft down about 7 tenths percent this morning. You jump over to Google, off about 1.3%. We'll jump to Meta off 2.2% right now. Good old Tesla trading off 2% as well. Let's check out some of the growth stocks. I always just jump over to ARK. That'll give you a quick example, man. ARK, yeah, growth stocks getting decimated this morning off 5% for ARK. Let's see how some of their top performers are. Yeah, Zoom off about 3.5%. What do they got? They got Teladoc off 3.6% in there. They got a bunch of Tesla in there. They got a bunch of Roku off 2.6%. DraftKings catches a lift yesterday. Probably a decent opportunity for a short, man, as that move comes ahead of DraftKings. Saw a lot of DraftKings ads on the Amazon broadcast last night for Thursday Night Football. I believe DraftKings is the uh, sole provider. They get some kind of a deal going on with Amazon. Uh, but guess what, folks? In the economy, I should say in the market that we're in right now, very difficult for these stocks to find a bid with everything going on across the board. Uh, yeah. ES, is that a new low? Yeah, we're ticking. Futures just near that level right now. I got 3863.50 on my chart, and we just ticked to, yeah, 3862.50. Uh, as we're talking about lows, folks, with the S&Ps down 55 points in the market, down 300 plus points from where we were trading at, basically about 72 hours ago. You want to be exact, 73 hours ago and 14 minutes. There you go. All right, let's jump around to the other articles I have pulled up here. Talked about Apple, okay? Now, talking about their new phone, the 14. Apple counts on upscale shoppers to turn latest iPhone into a hit. Now, you could argue that Apple's more expensive than Android overall anyway, but those Samsung phones are really catching up, man. Uh, Pre-orders show that the costliest iPhone 14, though, is the most popular model. Even without the price hike, Apple benefits from the shift to high end. Now, there's a couple things going on here. So the 14 lineup reserves the best features for the high end pro models. Those cost at least $1,000. And based on pre-order data, the strategy is already working with consumers who have turned the most expensive new iPhone into the most popular version. Now, the iPhone, okay, this is their total sales, okay? More than half of the sales for the entire company take up the iPhone. I mean, just remarkable, though, when you look at wearables even. 10.5% of the whole number and the iPad, right? The iPad and wearables are 20% versus their phone. Just big numbers all over the place. That's why it's the biggest company in the world, obviously, okay? Now, you get into part of the reason why they may be doing this. The standard iPhone is the one that starts at $799. Now, that caught some headlines recently when they came out and they said that they were not raising the price, okay? Because that was one of the things that they could have done in light of what's going on with inflation. But that model does not even run Apple's latest processor, the A16. Instead, it uses the A15 chip as last year. 
with the A16 going into the Pro models. The Pro phones also get a significant camera improvements, a new interface called the Dynamic Island. So what did they do here, folks? Okay, they realized maybe that they might not have enough to convert the low end, so maybe they went to the high end. That's left users with less reason to upgrade to a basic iPhone 14, but plenty to pay a little more for the Pro. And what did they do? They're making them pay more for the Pro, and they got all the headlines saying we're not really raising the price, and they're not. You want an iPhone 14, you can get one for 799 bucks. Now, sales of the device, it's gonna be tough to live up to, man. Last year, 2021, $192 billion. Worldwide, the smartphone market is expected to decline 3.5% to 1.31 billion units this year. In China, both manufacturing hub for Apple and a key market, smartphone sales have tumbled. Apple shipments are up 5% compared with an overall decline of 23%. Apple continues to gain significant share in China, and we expect the share gains to continue. I mean, remarkable, right? Apple shipments up 5%, overall decline 23%. They are crushing it, man. Now, successful iPhone 14, yeah, could help ease jitters. Of course it could after the month that Apple has had. I just told you about the wealth it created and then the loss that it's had during that time since we've had the pullback. Um, so we'll see where we go. But I bring this up especially because I fall right into all of this, folks. I think I have an iPhone 12 Pro 12 Max, 12 Pro Max, time flies. I bought it about two years ago. Uh, it's a great phone, still working out pretty well. I have a few issues with it. The battery not as strong as it used to be, but it's still relatively well. The screen has a little bit of a crack in it. That's my own bad, of course. Uh, so I've been thinking about upgrade. Once I reach my two year number, I'll be able to trade this in. <coughs> Excuse me. And, you know, I am going to fall into this category, folks, because if I do upgrade, it's going to be for a reason to upgrade to a higher end model where I will reap the benefits of it, because otherwise there's no reason for me to do it. And I'm actually like looking forward to potentially doing that around the holiday season. So it'll be interesting to see if they get people from the 12, which was a decent launch as well, to push them into that 14 Pro lineup, which is what they're talking about there. All right. What else do we have pulled up here? Yeah, so Adobe, big news yesterday. Let's jump to this one real quick. They had quite a day to the downside. My dad was talking about this on his program too, man. Be careful of Adobe. And yeah, look at it, man. You're down another 4.5% from where you were yesterday. Let's put this thing on a five-year weekly. He said, man, you know, you're coming into this low and look at the volume that you're doing. You're coming into the COVID low, which is a bar on a weekly basis from 324 to 255. You are now into that bar at 295. And folks, you've done 40 plus million shares this week, which is more than you were doing in the week at the COVID lows or the week prior. It's more than any week in there. The decimation that this thing just had and you put it back to a 15 minute you traded down from 370 to 295. You gave up 75 bucks for 375. And what is that exactly? You're talking about a give up of now 20% on the dot from where we were Wednesday. And that's not even counting that we were pushing 400. Okay, so you've given up about 25% for Adobe shares. Now, who knows how this will go in the future? The market, not very optimistic in the short term, but they are buying Figma for about $20 billion for a more consumer-friendly creative offering. The market, they don't like them spending that cash to get into another area, folks. Biggest acquisition, and the market found the deal expensive, sending shares to their steepest single-day decline since 2020. Now, you want to flip that around on the other side? It might be steep, and it might be expensive for Adobe, but who loves it? The Figma sound, uh, venture capitalists love it. Record-breaking sale to Adobe, delivering billions to top venture capitalists. Uh, early investors in the design software startup each ended up with at least $2 billion. Now, that's a 10-year number, folks, because you got one investing in 2012, shortly after the company was established and just started. Uh, that He is a partner at Index Ventures. Invited Figma's co-founder and CEO to dinner, ordered a bottle of wine to celebrate the deal. I would say so. Uh, it was then that the young entrepreneur hesitated. I'm 19. <laughs> no, no wine for the 19-year-old as they celebrated. And then 10 years later, man, $20 billion uh, as the VCs take a big chunk out of that. So they were the biggest holder, 12%. Uh, 
They declined to comment on the size of their stake, but the firm's first check and its subsequent investments are now worth about $2.6 billion. Uh, they have a bunch of top VC firms in there. Greylock Partners was in there, $14 million in funding. Kleiner Perkins, $25 million in 2018. Its stake is nearly 11%. Yeah, the early backers each ended up with $2 billion, folks. And you see the numbers they're talking about, 14 million, 25 million, big numbers. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's down 53. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we got markets trading lower. S&P's off 58 points right now at about 3860. You got the NASDAQ 100 off more than 200 points right now. Jumping around to a couple of articles, the yield curve, right? Huge inversion going on between the two-year and the 10-year. Uh, may reach the most since the 1980s. Uh, and that is talking about all spring global investments. Two-year yields are likely to surge in the next six months, increasing the excuse me, the inversion with 10 years to at least 100 basis points. That's Brian Jacobson, senior investment strategist at the firm. The yield gap is currently at minus 44 points on Friday, the deepest in a month. There's your chart in terms of that inversion. Folks, this one goes all the way back to 1980 to 84. Now look where we are. We're coming into basically where we were 99 to 2000. You are, I believe, below where we were at in late 89 now. 
zero is on this chart, we are below it, okay? And when you have the two, you're trading above the 10 year, you're talking about heightened concern among investors about a contraction in economic growth. I would say so. Now you jump to that, so what do you do? What do you do if you have this type of inversion talking about heightened concern among about a contraction in economic growth? Well, the next article out here, and I agree with this one, man, the dollar is the only place to hide this year as risk assets crumble, man. Now, the one that caught my ear, deep recession needed to reduce inflation, Citigroup says. Now, just try and think about this on a broad scale, folks, okay? We got the S&Ps down 60 right now. Uh, it is not a business's responsibility to generously right, stop inflation for the betterment of everybody. The market is supposed to do that, okay? If businesses are able to raise prices or if they think they need to raise prices to keep up with inflation and costs and capital, right? I mean, rents are rising. Human capital is rising because people need more to live, okay? As we come into the end of the program, all right, they need to be forced to make those decisions. Consumers need to be forced to make those decisions that are very different from what we're making right now. We're feeling it a little bit, but boy, it's a dicey scenario, folks, because we got the jobless claims this week. What were they? 213,000 unemployment in the threes, right? The jobs number, non-farm payrolls continuing to add hundreds of thousands of jobs. Not sure that's the case. It gets us out of this, and the market's not either. It's going to be a wild one, folks. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman, he is back next doing his program, the Tiger Technician's Hour. We'll be